Are you struggling to write content that hits home with your reader? Maybe you're putting a lot of effort into it, but you're failing to write the content that is really, really resonating with your ideal reader. By the end of this video, you'll have a plan and you'll know exactly how to write a really awesome blog post that your audience will love. For the best blogging tips and advice, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video every single Monday. I've written over 4,000 blog posts, so you could say I have some experience in the area. I share these tips with my community and my clients, and now it's your turn. So the first step is to write an attention-grabbing headline. So it doesn't matter how brilliant your blog post is, if no one is intrigued or interested enough to click it in the first place, it's a lot of wasted effort. So your headline needs to be attention-grabbing, uh, pique their interest in all of that jazz, and there are some other really important things that you need to put into your headline. So it needs to include your keywords, ideally at the beginning of your headline, but just in there is good enough. It needs to be short and sweet. The most click-through headlines are the ones that are shorter. Make it interesting but honest, so we don't use clickbait. It's not gonna be the way forward. It's not gonna be the way to build up your audience. And you want to ideally include an odd number. So the posts that are psychologically proven to do better are the ones that have an odd number in them. For example, five ways to bake a potato is gonna be better than my favorite ways to bake a potato. So you get the point, five is psychologically um, gonna be clicked more than four because it's an odd number, not just because it's a bigger number. Now the second point I just wanted to touch on is the length of the blog post. So there is no magic number. I think a blog post should be as long as it has to be. Now that might sound a bit bizarre, but if you're writing a recipe and a few images and 500 words will do the job, then that's good enough and it doesn't have to be any longer. The most shared blog posts are around two to 3,000 words, but if you're just gonna be using those words to fluff things out, then it doesn't make any sense. It just needs to be as long as the post and the content needs it to be. So I'd love to know what are your biggest content writing roadblocks. Let me know in the comments. So the third point to consider when trying to write an awesome blog post is to make it scannable. Human nature is, we're all a bit short of time and we're just gonna scan down a post to see whether it's something that we are interested in. And so, and even if it is something that we're interested in, we're probably gonna scan it too. So you can help that process by breaking up your content. So no one wants to look at a big wall of text and start to read that, it's just too off-putting. So make sure you use headers and subheaders to break that copy up and that's also great for SEO terms too. Make sure you use white space so let those paragraphs breathe and have some space around them. Use bullet points and use bold on the keywords or other important words that you want to highlight. All these things help someone scan through the content and pick out the important things. So the next step is to use really good graphics. Now people process images 60,000 times faster than words. So we all need to be using images wherever we can. And if you're not a gifted photographer, then stock images can be the way forward. With stock images, I would always say, actually buying them gives you better images that aren't being used by everyone else. And you can make sure that you are buying ones that are on brand and it just is a little bit more exclusive and it's almost as if you've taken them yourself. Another tip for stock images is just crop them in a different way. So you can actually use an image multiple times if you date, take different crops of that image. So that's another thing to bear in mind. So the next point is to make sure your blog posts always have a great call to action at the bottom. So every single piece of content you put out into the world should have a call to action whether that is to engage with you more, or to follow you on another social media platform, or to go and download a freebie, or to buy an offer, it all should have some purpose, otherwise you're just, it's just hot air. So make sure that every piece of content has an appropriate call to action on it. So if in doubt, my favorite and most go-to call to action is to get someone onto my email list. 
it is a way that I can make sure I'm serving that person, delivering up the content that they need and that will help them. Maybe they'll go on to buy a program for me in the future or book coaching, but really I'm at least gonna be helping them through my free offerings to progress and get where they want to go. So that would be my fallback in every other situation where maybe I don't have a strong idea of what the call to action would be, then it would always be to get them on my email list. Okay, so you've created this amazing blog post. Now, how do you make sure that people are gonna share it? That is a really big deal into getting traction and making sure your content is working as hard as it can for you. And there are four main things that you need to focus on when you're trying to create posts that are amazing but also shareable. So start with great content. Number one, it has to be good content. It sounds a bit obvious, but some people aren't doing it. Make sure that your content is great. Make sure that your content looks good. Make it pretty. Have graphics in there that are applicable to different social media platforms and that will look good. And then make sure that it's easy for them to share it. So click in the sharing buttons yourself and make sure that everything populates how it should, that it's not just a random URL that actually shows what the blog title is and puts your Twitter handle in if that's the share that you're going for. So make it really easy for people to share, put a lovely pin on it, do some of the work for the person as well. And then lastly, ask for the share, ask people to share it. It's proven statistically that if you ask for a retweet, you're more likely to get that retweet. People are quite willing to do what we ask them, but we have to sort of put our big girl pants on and ask them to share it. If you found this useful, please pin it. If you you know, know a friend that would benefit from this, please share it with them. And then how you make the best of all this is to, the idea of people sharing it is to get interaction and to get engagement. So you need to make sure that when this is being shared and when people are then commenting and engaging with you, that you engage back. It doesn't have to be a one-sided conversation and you'll build your community and all of this no like, and trust that we're always after so much better if you actually respond. Now you might be saying, no one goes back to look at whether I've responded in the comments. That's probably true, but the other people will see. So the next person that reads that blog post will be reading that thinking, that person left a comment and she went and answered the question or she went and interacted. So maybe I'll leave a comment too. And that goes for your blog post and social media. So it's really important when you create this amazing content that gets shared and starts to get engagement, that you engage as well and that you get in there and respond to those people. So now you know exactly how to create an amazing blog post that is going to get shared and get engagement. But how do you know which topic to talk about? Don't worry, I have a printable and a downloadable freebie that you can get your hands on which goes into the 17 types of blog posts that you should have on your blog and everyone should have on their blog too. So they're not industry specific, they are general types of blog posts that you can put on your site regardless of your blog niche. And I'll put the link for that below and up in the cards. Also, if you want to join a community of women just like you, I run a secret society where I share up-to-date blogging and biz tips to help you turn your blog into a business. If you'd love to join the Mamapreneur Revolution, we would love to have you. And again, I'll put the link below the video and up in the cards. Just click it and request access to this amazing group filled with amazing women. So if you like this video, please let me know by liking it below, share it with your friends and subscribe for more videos. And I would love to hear any comments you have below. I will get back to you all. And if you have any questions, please do let me know. I'll see you soon.